Fontea is an independent curator and a graduate of the Art History Program at the University of British Columbia. Her curatorial projects include unsent dispatches from the Iranian Revolution, 1978-1979, which was at Presentation House Gallery in 2005. The Utopias Constructed series at Republic Gallery between 2014 and 2018. Mirrored Explosions at the West Vancouver Museum in 2016. Where Between at Equinox Gallery in 2016. Looking at Persepolis at the Polygon Gallery in 2018. And Modernism in Iran, 1959 to 1979 at Griffin Art Projects in 2018. I would like to uh, congratulate Fantea and thank her. We started talking about this project a few years ago and uh, it really means a lot, uh, not only to the gallery, uh, but to myself as uh, um, you know, having an opportunity to work with Fantea has been a real privilege and we've had many uh, really great conversations over that time, so thank you Fantea. And Uh, Dr. Daftari. Um, curator and scholar Fersha Daftari received her PhD in art history from Columbia University in New York. Uh, during her tenure at the Museum of Modern Art in New York from 1988 to 2009, she curated a number of international exhibitions, including Without Boundary 17 Ways of Looking in 2006. As an independent curator and scholar, she has continued writing and curating international exhibitions of Middle Eastern art with a focus on the modern and contemporary art of Iran. Uh, I'll just uh, mention some of her exhibitions uh, Between Word and Image at New York University Gray Art Gallery in 2002, Iran Modern at Asian Society Museum in New York in 2015, Action Now, the first exhibition of contemporary Iranian performance art held in Paris in 2012. Safar Voyage, contemporary works by Arab Iranian Turkish artists here in Vancouver at the UBC Anthropology Museum in 2013, and uh, Rebel Jester Mystic Poet Contemporary Persians at the Aga Khan Museum in Toronto. That exhibition was in 2017. Um, and a series of exhibitions of contemporary Iranian art uh, from the collection of Muhammad Afghani, which was a, a virtual museum. Among her publications, uh, I would like to mention uh, the Influence of uh, Persian Art on Gauguin, Matisse, and Kandinsky in 1989, and her most recent book, Persia Reframed, Iranian Vision of Modern Contemporary Art in 2019. We are delighted to have you here, Fanny Jun, and welcome and thank you. Some, not only some, not everything, uh, 
that of what I believe to be Tanori's outstanding contributions to the aesthetic in Mumbai. And then I will walk you through at the end, through a memory lane uh, that goes all the way back to the 1970s, early 70s. So let's first take a look at Tanori's early treatments of the human body. Sculpture was a medium that did not evolve in Iran after the Islamic conquest in the 17th century. The ban on idolatry was the underlying reason. However, <coughs> with the process of modernization in the late Qajar period, but especially during the Padani regime, the language of academic realism was imported from Europe to create representations of, say, kings and poets. Tanori's early training in Iran is rooted in this tradition. On the left, you see him at work in Tehran in 1955, next to a very conventional bus. The art school there in Tehran was quite parochial, so he decided to leave and go and study abroad. First, he went to Carrara, for a year in Italy, and then from 58 to 1960 to Milan, where he studied under the supervision of Marino Marini, an illustrious artist at the time. You see one of Marini's works in the center. In his own version of the nude, nude figure on the right, uh, Tanovoli reflects the kind of archaizing style that was prevalent in Italian modernism. And by this archaizing, I mean uh, use of unclassical proportions and rough surface textures. Uh, the two bronzes you see here are both in the show downstairs, so we are lucky that way. Uh, so now, if we fast forward to later works when Tanabuli's own aesthetic language had taken shape. Uh, that's when we realized that he invented a whole new language to describe the human figure. These are anthropos anthropocentric, yes, but not complete human figures. Body parts include blocks, faucets, keys, shrines, and cages, and some humble objects with religious connotations. The use of such objects is very astute in his work. They're not trivial decorative elements. There's an agenda behind them. These low-tech objects were scavenged in bazaars and in the less affluent neighbors of the city. They belong to the vernacular of popular life and the proletarian culture. And in my view, elevating them to fine arts, to the level of fine arts, is in itself a politicized statement. Sometimes, as in the case of the works on the screen, keys and locks operate as surrogate genitals. They seem to point to, uh, to nudity or sexuality while nodding um, in a clever way at censorship. In my view, they signify locked up sexuality. The gesture is humorous indeed, but not in a superficial sense. It can be interpreted as a critical response to a conservative society. Humor, as I've tried to address in most of my writings, is an important element in Iranian modern art, but something that's not been highlighted as much as it should have. Uh, when you look at the head of his Poets with Hitch too, you see that it has metamorphosed into an emblem of religion, uh, of Shiism to be more specific. It can be identified as the hand of Hazrat Abbas, which was severed at the Battle of Karbala when he attempted to bring back water from the Euphrates. During uh, the Ashura commemorations of that event, such hands become ubiquitous in ceremonies and processions. You also see them decorating shrine-like structures, often conceived as public water dispensers which are also commemorative of the thirsty martyrs of Karbala. They are known as Sabbukhune. Khune meaning house, and Sabbuk is water carrier or water bearer, so the house of water. You see the hand on top uh, of one such Sabbukhune is on the screen, to the left, on top, the 
not disassemble. The Lamarie was highly influential in finding objects that entered into the iconography of an arts movement that came to be baptized as the Sabahune movement. He was not the only Sabahune artist to integrate the hand into his art, but he was the only one to make it part of, the, of his cultural body language. Tanawari's use of this religious emblem is more complex than the other Sakakune artists. Why is it pierced with the word hich, meaning nothing, or meaning or nothingness in Persian? It is noteworthy that this frigidly erect figure resembles an armored warrior a saluting soldier rather than a soulful poet it claims to represent. In Tanawari's lexicon, poet, prophet, and artists are all manifestations of the same, same persona. This leads me to believe that we're looking at the image of the in, embattled artist, perhaps grappling with matters re related to religion. Aside from the innovations in the treatment of the human figure, Tanavoli's subject matter too, too transcended what came before him, and in my view is even more daring than that of his contemporaries. While he shared a sense of class consciousness with other Sabahune artists, such as painters like uh, Pilar Rao and Jose de Rudy, and uh, an interest in the ordinary, the prosaic, the humble, and the mundane, a characteristic that was also found in uh, um, American and European artists were pursuing in pop art. Tanovoli's treatment of such iconography was pointedly critical. Let's look at his innovation in art on the right. This assemblage was created in the early 60s when the Sabahune movement he helped create became the most avant-garde expression of Iranian modernism. This work, however, is very different from what is considered Sabahune proper in that it lacks references to typical religious motifs such as the aforementioned hand of Hazrat Abbas. In its center, you see what we call in Persian an afdabe, which is a water container used in toilets. It's the Islamic hygiene's version of the toilet paper. The Nobody's elevation of this most abject object found in toilets and giving it a central presence is humorous, sarcastic, and even subversive. In the process, it proves fun and institutional teachings that favor lofty themes executed in three-dimensional marble or bronze, but does it leave the very subtle of the movement he helped create on scale? The targets appear to be not just art institutions and an art movement, but a rudimentary society governed by religious rituals. Most of the elements here are found objects. Aside from the Aftabe, you have prayer rock in the center, and pumpkin seeds. The only painting you see is along the borders, which represents a series of uh, colorful Aftabes. All of this was an affront to what was considered art at the time. Neither critics nor the public understood the joke, or probably they did, and took offense. Galerie Borghese, where it was exhibited in 1960, had to close down the show. I mean, he, uh, the woman, the lady, Mrs. Sobeda, asked uh, the artist to remove his work, and two days later, she just closed down the show. And the work was not seen again until it was.